This lecture provides us a couple of ideas of how to make a good data analysis presentation. There are a couple of key components that I feel like are uh, important to making a good presentation that involves data analysis. And so I thought I would just list a couple of them here, um, just so you can kind of keep them in mind uh, and think about them the next time you're making your next presentation. So um, the first, and I think the most important thing you want to have in a presentation is to kind of state the question that you're trying to answer. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a presentation and we've been 10 minutes in and I still don't exactly know what question this person is trying to answer, okay? So it's important that upfront um, you, that you not assume that everyone's on the same page, that everyone has the same background, but to state the question clearly and succinctly so that everyone knows what the goal is, okay? And, then, and once everyone knows what the goal is, we can all be kind of on the same page and kind of oriented towards achieving that goal, okay? So stating the question is very important from the get-go in a presentation. Um, Secondary to that, you might want to describe what type of question it is that you're trying to answer if it's not immediately obvious, okay? So remember that we had there's the six types of questions that you can try to ask. And so it's useful to the audience sometimes to know if you're trying to do an inf if you're trying to ask an inferential question versus a causal one versus a predictive one. That can help to inform any discussion they may occur afterwards in terms of improving your analysis or modifying it. Um, another thing that I like to do and I think I think is very useful is to show the data. Okay, it's often uh, helpful or, or tempting to just show summaries or kind of or, or even just kind of um, um, just uh, not even data summaries, but just kind of summaries and words of what of what the results are. But it's actually very useful to show the data. Um, but just as a warning, though, this can be a double-edged sword um, because people like to talk about data when they see it. Um, so if you want people to have good discussion and to have informed discussion uh, that may be useful to you, I think it's very useful to show the data because people love to talk about data. Um, but so even if you don't want that discussion to happen necessarily, you may be better off in the end ha when, if it does happen. Um, and so to this extent, I find plots are better than tables because plots show people, you know, a summary of the data, but they also show people deviations from what might be expected. And so plots are very useful for kind of in, in producing discussion and kind of encouraging people to think about the data. Um, when it's possible, if you're making a presentation and you're showing the data, uh, if you're showing some summary or a kind of a statistic about the data, try to show a measure of uncertainty to go with it. Um, and, I, and the reason why is um, it just provides for a richer discussion when you can incorporate the uncertainty uh, into any predictions or any estimates that you make um, from the data. And so uh, try to have a broad array of measures of uncertainty so that people can get the full picture of what's going on uh, in your analysis. So for example, if you have a primary model, it can be useful to show results from say a bunch of secondary models or to show things like confidence intervals for, for parameters. Okay? Lastly, I think it's important that when you present results from a data analysis that you separate um, three things. They're the evidence, the interpretation, and the decision. Okay, It's often easy to kind of conflate all these things into one sentence or into one statement. And I think it helps people to, to provide a useful discussion if you can separate them out. So for example, uh, if you're looking at, let's say, an air pollutant and some health outcome, you might find that uh, the increase in the air pollutant incre you know, results, uh, or you estimate that an increase in the air pollutant results in a 5% increase in the health outcome. So that's bad, let's say. So maybe the health outcome is mortality. So an increase in the, in the, in the pollutant is a five, results in a 5% increase in mortality. So that's the evidence, okay? That's the result of your analysis. You estimated some parameter, and that was the result. And maybe there's a confidence interval that you can present around that too. So the interpretation might be, okay, air pollution is bad for you, okay? And then the decision might be, we need to lower air pollution levels uh, in whatever environment we're thinking about. So there's three separate components there that all can be evaluated independently. Um, given a, a set of evidence, your interpretation might be that, air, oh, if it's only 5%, maybe air pollution is not so bad for you. Uh, or it might be 5% and that's terrible. But your interpretation can be made separate from the evidence that's provided. And furthermore, what you do about it might be, is further separate from what you think about it, how you interpret it, and what the evidence is. So get, separating the evidence, the interpretation, and the decision can help people think about the different components and can weigh the evidence in terms of how they would be act differently or how important that evidence is to whatever process they're involved in. So I think doing that it, it provides for a useful presentation and provides for a, a more important, a, a useful discussion about the meaning of your results and what we should do about them.